Hey everyone, and welcome back for another deep dive. You know how much I love leaking into these topics, and today's no different. We're talking blood pressure, but not the surface level stuff. We're going deeper, like way deeper. We've got some really interesting research to get to, plus some surprising insights you might not expect. Yeah. And to help us break it all down, I've got to... Well, I've got an expert here with me who can make even the most complicated medical jargon sound like a bestseller. So what have we got on the docket for today's deep dive? You guys sent in a really fascinating mix of articles, research, even some personal stories about blood pressure. And I think our mission here is to figure out what's really worth paying attention to. You know what I mean? Like what actually makes a difference when it comes to keeping that blood pressure in check? I'm with you. Ready to dive in. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, first up. We've got to talk about the DASH diet. I feel like everyone and their dog has mentioned this diet at some point. But is it all hype or is there real science behind oh, it? Oh, it is definitely not hype. The DASH diet, and that stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, by the way. Yeah. It's actually backed by some very rigorous research. We're talking studies from places like Johns Hopkins and even the National Institutes of Health. They've done these large-scale, well-controlled studies. And they found that DSH can significantly lower both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Okay, hold on. Pause for a sec. I know we have some health-savvy listeners out there, but can you give us a super quick refresher on systolic versus diastolic, just so everyone's on the same page? Absolutely. Systolic blood pressure. That's the top number. That's the pressure in your arteries when your heart beats. And then diastolic, the bottom number. That's the pressure when your heart is at rest, between beats. And both are super important for overall heart health. Gotcha. Thanks for cleaning that up. Okay, so back to DSH. You said it can significantly lower those numbers, so it's not just about cutting salt. Right. Well, reducing sodium is definitely part of it. DSH is really more about what you're adding in. Think of it like a complete eating pattern shift. We're talking loading up on fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, whole grains, basically foods that are minimally processed as close to their natural state as possible. Okay, so it's not a quick fix. It's a lifestyle change. I can get behind that. But, and I'm just going to be honest here, Sometimes eating healthy can get expensive. Is DHH doable on a budget? That's actually one of the really interesting things that researchers have looked into. And it turns out that following the DASH diet can actually be quite affordable, especially when you compare it to a diet full of processed foods, restaurant meals, sugary drinks. When you focus on cooking at home with whole, simple ingredients, it can actually be easier on the wallet. Interesting. You know, I'm always a little skeptical of these diet fads, but the research on this one is pretty convincing. Plus, who doesn't love a good plate of fruits and veggies? But DSH isn't the only diet out there making waves. What about things like Mediterranean, paleo, even keto? Do those have a place in blood pressure management? That's a great question. And I think it's important to address because you're right. There are a lot of different approaches out there mm -hmm. and it can feel like everyone's got a different opinion. When it comes to blood pressure, though, the evidence does point towards some common threads. Like what? We'll take the Mediterranean diet, for instance. It's often praised for its emphasis on heart-healthy fats, like olive oil, along with those same powerhouses we see in DAH. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and it's naturally lower in red meat and processed foods, which definitely aligns with what we know about keeping blood pressure in check. So we're seeing a pattern here. Whole unprocessed foods, those seem to be the real MVPs. But what about those more restrictive diets, like keto, for example? It's got a pretty intense following, yeah. but it's also, well, it's pretty controversial. What's the deal with keto and blood pressure? Yeah, keto is interesting. And to be honest, the research is still kind of evolving. There is some evidence to suggest that it could be helpful for weight loss, which in turn could help lower blood pressure. But because keto restricts carbohydrates to such low levels, it really requires a lot of caution and careful monitoring especially for anyone with pre-existing conditions. Okay, so what kind of monitoring are we talking about? Well, for starters, drastically cutting carbs can sometimes mess with your electrolyte balance. You know those minerals like sodium, potassium, uh. magnesium. That play a big role in regulating blood pressure. And you also want to be mindful of potential strain on the kidneys with keto. So it's really crucial to talk to your doctor before making any kind of radical change to your diet especially one like keto. So proceed with caution. Exactly. And, you know, that brings up an important point. We often get so caught up in these specific diets. Yeah. But I think the reality is a more holistic approach to health is really key when it comes to managing blood pressure. It's not just about what we eat right. It's about our lifestyle, too. A hundred percent. Things like regular exercise, stress management, getting enough sleep. Those all have a massive impact on our overall health, and that includes our blood pressure. And we can't forget about everyone's favorite. 
quitting smoking. Absolutely. Kicking that habit is one of the best things you can do for your heart and your overall health. And while we're on the topic of healthy habits, let's circle back to something you mentioned earlier, home blood pressure monitoring. Okay, so you've got your diet in check, you're moving your body, you're managing your stress, but how do you actually know what's going on with your blood pressure? That's where home monitoring comes in. And it's not just for people who've already been diagnosed with hypertension. It can actually be incredibly empowering for anyone who wants to be more proactive about their heart health. I've heard that. But what's so great about checking it at home? Can't you just get it checked at the doctor's office? Of course, regular checkups are important. But here's the thing. Your blood pressure naturally fluctuates throughout the day. It can be influenced by everything from your morning coffee to that stressful work meeting you had. Home monitoring just gives you a much clearer, more comprehensive picture of your blood pressure patterns over time. So it's like being your own health detective. Exactly. Plus, when you're more aware of those fluctuations, you can actually start to connect the dots between your lifestyle choices and your blood pressure numbers. Like maybe you notice a spike after a particularly salty meal, or you notice a dip after you've taken a relaxing walk in nature. Makes sense. Speaking of monitoring, there are so many different devices out there these days, it's kind of overwhelming to know where to start. You've got everything from those fancy smart monitors that sync with your phone, to the more old school ones, what should people keep in mind when choosing a monitor? That's a great question. And you're right, the technology has really come a long way. Those smart monitors are pretty cool. But I think if you're looking for a reliable, no frills option, you really can't go wrong with a classic automatic cuff style monitor, the kind that goes around your upper arm. Those are the ones you usually see at the doctor's office, right? Exactly. They tend to be more accurate than those wrist or finger monitors. And speaking of accuracy, uh -huh. make sure you get a cuff that fits properly. Right. Size matters for sure. Right. Okay. So you've got your monitor. You're all set up. What's the best way to actually use it? I mean, you don't want to be taking your blood pressure every five minutes. Right? Yeah. You definitely don't want to drive yourself crazy checking it constantly. I think the key is really consistency. Find a time of day that works for you. Maybe it's first thing in the morning or right before bed. And then try to take your readings around the same time each day. Like a little blood pressure ritual. Exactly. Make it part of a relaxing routine. Mm. And don't take your blood pressure right after you've exercised or you've had some kind of stressful encounter. You want to try to get as accurate a reading as possible. Find your zen. Take your blood pressure. I like it. But what do you actually do with all those numbers? That's where the real power of home monitoring comes in. Keep a log of your readings. You can go old school with a pen and paper, or you can use one of those apps. And that way, you and your doctor can track your progress over time and see how your body's responding to different lifestyle changes. So we've talked a lot about how to manage blood pressure, but I want to touch on the why for a second. Why is this so important? Oh, that's such a good point. You know, high blood pressure is often called the silent killer because a lot of times it doesn't have obvious symptoms. But over time, it can really put a lot of strain on your heart and your blood vessels, which can lead to some serious health problems. Like how serious are we talking? Oh, well... We're talking increased risk of heart attack, stroke, heart failure, kidney disease, even things like vision problems and dementia. It's definitely not something to take lightly. Okay, that's a pretty convincing argument for taking care of our blood pressure. But the good news is it sounds like a lot of this is within our control. Absolutely. High blood pressure is often preventable and treatable, especially when you catch it early. Mm. And all those lifestyle changes we talked about, those are really your secret weapons. Yeah, it's not just about adding years to our lives, right? It's about adding life to our years. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, we've covered a ton of ground today. We talked about the DSH diet. We explored some other dietary approaches and even dove into the world of home blood pressure monitoring. But if there's one thing I want you to take away from all of this, it's that knowledge is power. I second that. The more you know about your body and how it works, the better equipped you'll be to make choices that really support your health. And don't forget, you don't have to navigate this alone. Your doctor is your partner in all of this. Exactly. Reach out to them with any questions or concerns that you have. Now, before we wrap things up, I want to leave you with a little something to ponder. We talked about how stress can impact our blood pressure. But did you know that even something as simple as spending time in nature has been shown to lower it? It's true. <laughs> Studies have shown that even a few minutes surrounded by trees or listening to the sounds of nature can have a really calming effect on your mind and body. So there you have it, your homework for this week. Find a little slice of nature, even if it's just a houseplant in your living room, and take a few moments to just breathe and relax. 
your blood pressure will thank you for it. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring that fascinating world around you.